When you first knew your passion for theater? Uh, well, my first was passion for ballet, and I, that was a passion that was kind of thrust upon me by my wonderful mother, yes. who, as, as Sheila says in the chorus line, uh, she wanted me to be what uh, she she made me what she wanted to be, and that's exactly what she did. She loved the ballet, and I think she wanted to give me an opportunity to get not be a housewife. We're talking about the 50s here, okay. and once I think she realized as she watched me grow and saw that I could really point my toe. That was it. She she groomed me for the ballet, and that was the way I was raised. Did you want to be a ballerina? Uh, you know, it's very interesting. I was a rather clever little girl. I I realized at some point because I, I was good. I was a really good dancer. I had great training, and I I did have the talent. But I do. I was someplace along 12, 13 years old, I thought, wait a minute, to be a prima ballerina. You have to give up a lot of your life for this. And I think I want to live life a little more. So I think what I want to be is a soloist. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that was my drive with the ballet. And my, my the ballerina I most admired while I saw some great ones with ballet theater was Lupe Serrano, who was brilliant. But she was she was a ballerina, but she wasn't Nora Kay, and she wasn't uh, Maria Tallchief, and she wasn't Alicia Alonso. And I so admired her that, that that was my bent. Although, in the meantime, I loved jazz, and I wasn't allowed to take it because I was, at a, well, not, I was at a very severe ballet school. Very Which school did you go to? I, it actually, it was an American Ballet Theater School oh. in Denver, and then when they closed it, Dmitry Romanoff, who was the regisseur of American Ballet Theater, and his wife moved to Northern California, and we followed them. Oh. So this is serious ballet. The, the most dangerous thing we did was character dancing. <laughs> <laughs> no tap, no jazz, but but I had such admiration for um, Sid Charisse because I could see the ballet training and she was sexy and she was gorgeous and she right. did jazz. So it, I, very quickly after my first ballet job, I took off the toe shoes and went to Luigi's class and became a jazz Broadway dancer. What was your first Broadway um, My first show. Broadway show was Golden Rainbow in 1967. Wow. And my second one, right on that, on the heels of that, was uh, Promises, Promises, and that's the first time I met Michael Bennett. Wow. Who choreographed that. Okay. And the first time I met Jerry Orbach, who starred in it. I was a chorus girl, and then by 1987, what is so now we're talking almost almost 20 years. How was Jerry Orbach as a person? A doll. Yeah. Everybody liked Jerry. What a what a easy going great guy. And then his wife, Elaine. Yeah, Elaine. And um, so it was very funny with the dirty dancing to say, uh, you know, we met. Um, <laughs> yes. I was, you know, and, I, and he knew who I was, but I would not. I don't know that he put that together. So. It's a very small world. What, with Dirty Dancing, wasn't there some casting switch around? Oh my yes, oh my yes. I was hired originally to play the uh, that 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 kind of bad lady. Really? And if you really look at Dirty Dancing, there are two, yes. there are two grown up women in Dirty Dancing. Yes. The mother and that other woman who's a uh, right. 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 So that's what I was hired for, probably because I could dance, and I think originally they were going to have maybe a little dance scene between Johnny teaching this yes. bad woman, you know, the, so it could be kind of a glamorous thing. So I get off the plane to rehearse. They told me, come to rehearsal, you'll have a, a, a week of rehearsal, and then you'll go away, and then you'll come back. I get off the plane, no makeup, my hair's fuzzy out to here. I, they drive me up the mountain, it takes an hour from Roanoke. Uh, I hear on the walkie, uh, we would like to have Kelly down on set. And I'm thinking, why down on set? Because I'm here for rehearsal. They drive me down to set. It's at the gazebo. They're all dressed and ready to go. I'm not putting two to two together. I'm not realizing they're camera ready. They're costumes. They got the extras. I'm, I'm not putting this together. I'm just confused. They ask me to stand there, and they're looking at me, and they're talking about me. That's always such a good feeling. You know, that kind of thing. And I'm think, all I'm thinking is, oh, I wish I'd put some makeup on before I got on the plane. Then pretty soon it's like Jennifer Gray comes stand next to Kelly, Jane Brucker comes in, stand next to Kelly, Jerry come over and stand next to Kelly, and, I, and they're all talking, talking, talking. And then they step forward and they say, today we release the actress playing the wife. And we were wondering if you would take the role. 
and it was a 180 degree turn. I mean, no two women could have been more different. I, it was the most bizarre thing that anyone had ever said to me. Jerry Orbach saying in my ear, take it, take it, it's a better role. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't remember this character. I mean, I know she was there, but is she interesting? And then they said to me, you get to do the movie, you will be in the movie from now until we wrap. And I had never done a film from beginning to end. I've always, you know, you come in, you do your stuff, you leave. And I thought, it's exactly what I wanted to do, was a film beginning to end. Yeah, okay. And then they took me up, cut my hair, found something for me to wear, pushed me down the gazebo, and we did the merengue. That's <laughs> wonderful. That's one of my favorite movies of all time, actually. They're uh, you not a whole bunch of other people. Isn't it amazing? It's one of those cold films that everyone watches like a hundred thousand times. There's a sweetness in that film. And it, it's, it's interesting. I mean, we'll just take away to Gilmore Did you meet the, my, the, writer? the writer? Oh, yeah, they were all what there. What is she like? The oh, she's lovely. It. She's lovely. And, he, and, I, and I loved Emil Arbelino, the director. What a good guy. And Kenny Ortega, who was a choreographer, is now a big, he's a director. He choreographed the Olympics, got an Emmy. And, I mean, How do you uh, feel they're bringing a Dirty Dancing to New York? Well, I, I've heard, I'm, I'm curious about this production because it, it, it was a big hit in London. And I hear that it wasn't good, but people love it. But I don't know. I don't know. Did you ever talk to her and say you want to be on the um, when they bring it to Broadway? You'd like to bring prize your role in the Broadway show? I'm too old to be Marjorie. No, you're not. No, Marjorie Houseman was just about 40 years old. Okay, I'm just fast. about not. Well, your your vitamins will work. My vitamins are great. <laughs> I'm, I'm a great grandma. I'm into grandma now. Okay. I'm not. You know, those actresses who think they can fool people. Uh, I'm not well, interested. Look, in the hairspray movie that they just did with John Travolta. But that's a funny fun. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we, but Ricky yeah, Lake was in the audience. You know, yeah. Ricky Lake was in the audience in the scenes, you know. She played Tracy. Yes, yeah. And she was in, like, the gym scene. If you look, you can see. Well, yeah, you can come back in and be somebody else. But, right. uh, no, I mean, we, we do our roles. We do them as well as we can, and we move on. And if, if they happen to be huge hits and memorable roles, right. we pat ourselves on the back any, and thank like, our lucky stars and move on. Were there any exciting moments in Dirty Dancing? Like, I love the lead, the lead me, leading man in Dirty Dancing. Well, Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze. How was what he was doing he like? with? How was he I was just reading him? online today. He's he's working on that television series that he's starring in. God bless him. What Good. star? What show? It's called The Beast. I believe it's called The Beast. Okay. I don't watch much television. And he's been in, doing chemo. I mean, what? I but see, he was a dancer. He was a dancer. I didn't know he was sick. He had pancreatic cancer. Oh, no. This is, this oh, is no. bad. There are cancers and there are cancers, and pancreatic cancer is not scary. I fell in love with him in that movie. Oh, he's a, he's a, and he's a doll. And he's ghost. one of the nicest people. Yes. And so dedicated to what he's doing, whatever the project is, he is so committed. He's, a, he's an angel. He's a, he's a terrific guy. Did you see him in Ghost? Huh? Ghost? The movie Ghost? Oh, what? Yeah. It's that marvelous. Was, uh, yeah. He's just marvelous. And, and what was Jennifer Grey like? She was, a, she was a little kind of stayed away because I think she was nervous that she was starring in the film. But she's quite funny. I mean, Joel Grey is her father, yes, so how unfunny could she be? She's very smart. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know, it's interesting when I think about the Houseman family in that film. They're all smart. I mean, all, the individual actors were all intelligent people. Uh, so that made made it easy for us all to get along. I like Jennifer a lot. She has a good sense of humor. Uh, Do you want to talk about being Sheila in like, my favorite show of all time, Chorus Line? Chorus Line. <laughs> it's one of or my your new show, favorites. it's second. Yeah, or well, your new show. I do show. have a new show. It's called <laughs> Becky Shaw. It's a new play. It's, it's, it's second stage. You have you to start a rehearsal. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm far from dancing. It. This woman is not at all capable of dancing. She no. has a Affliction. What's her affliction? She has MS. Oh. Yeah, and uh, it's a five-character play. All the, the other four characters are younger, like one generation down from me. It's a beautifully written play, and I have yet to rehearse it or to even the script. So I'm just going to just say 
Becky Shaw, give it your mind. I'm not going to say anything more about it. We'll see okay. how it goes. I, Do you know when it opens? I believe uh, right after the, the, the new year, and then, and then I think it closes mid-late February. So okay. it's, a, it's a limited run. And we'll see how it goes. Uh, but I, I think it's well written, and I'm not, not going to talk about it. That's it. Okay. I'm done. You, you pulled it out of me. <laughs> Hi, you're watching Corinne's Corner.com. So come see Title Show and hi everybody.